Yeah. Here's Michael. Morning, everybody. How are we feeling? All right. Now, excuse me for a moment. Now, used to public speaking. Hello, my fellow New Yorkers. I'm Michael Voss, owner of MV Consulting Incorporated. I'm a political commentator and a member of the press. Some of you may be familiar with my videos on YouTube or my articles on various blogs and across the internet. But today, I am here as a concerned American, just like all of you. Sun Tzu wrote in his famous book, The Art of War, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. While we are not at war with Congress, make no mistake, we are engaged in a battle for America. A battle that requires we know first our rights, and we are determined to make a difference. Thus, we are enacting our rights to speak and assemble in the face of media criticism and scorn from entrenched elected officials because we do not agree with the direction Congress is taking for this nation. I know it is a difficult task to stand up in front of our peers and say, to Congress, and say that Congress has failed to listen to voters. Not because tens of millions of Americans don't agree. When it comes to the health care reform that was shoved down our throats against our wills, the Obama stimulus that was passed without anyone knowing what was involved or what it enacted, the disdain against Americans in Arizona who stood up when the federal government wanted to lay down. No, we're not alone in what we believe. But what separates us is that we are willing to publicly say what tens of millions mentioned in schools, at the water cooler, and on the golf course. And only in America is this possible. I have had the chance to live in Moscow. I have seen the socialist system in action and the results of generations of its after effects. I have lived, I have lived with the people that could not speak out against the government, could not pray openly, could not impact the laws and enforcement that affected their lives, and those people envied me. Because I am an American that could do all of those things that they wished they could do. It is the reason why I am speaking before you today. Right now, our voices and actions are being heard. They are having an effect, an effect that the entrenched officials, the elected officials in Congress fear, because it means they cannot continue to ignore voters or pander to special interests and the political party agendas, because we are willing to act on the rights we have in this nation. Congress and those that subsist on the status quo are trembling. You may, you may recall this quote as well. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Congress should fear us and the tens of millions of Americans that think just like us, that share our hopes and goals, that haven't come out today for various reasons, but will vote their conscience just like we will. We are not violent or racist or bought or whatever moniker that the media and Speaker Nancy Pelosi would like to label us with. We are Americans that know our rights and we are willing to use them. Career politicians with agendas and special interests support, excuse me, special interest support thought we forgot, but we haven't. I want to be clear. I'm speaking directly about politicians that have made a career out of the abuse of public service. People that have forgotten those that elected them and the reasons they were elected for. Let me name the names. I'm speaking about Representative Maurice Stinchy, a man that is entrenched in Congress, a man that has served for 18 years, a man that will not speak to his constituents, 
I say that because I have written to Representative Henshaw as a member of the press and as a voter of New York. I have written him about the health care reform twice. I have written to him about the Obama stimulus and the actions of the Department of Justice. And months later, I still await even a single letter of reply. Though I have gotten unsolicited emails asking me to donate to his re-election campaigns. I'm speaking about appointed Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. She too seeks to be re-elected. Actually, elected in her case, as the public had no voice in granting her the junior senator seat she now holds. She too has neglected to speak to the people. Even worse, she has taken us for granted. She assumes that we will not have noticed her flip-flop on immigration as she now gains significant financial support from pro-illegal alien organizations. She assumes that we won't remember that she sent out the same form letter response on the health care reform for six months. A form letter that, when questioned, her office still has not made a comment as to why it was a copy, even four months after I asked that question. And Senator Charles Schumer, he too refused to comment on the health care reform. He too actively avoided town hall meetings. He too has taken a stance repeatedly of party over the people. I don't say these things because about the entrenched elected officials in Congress because I've heard a rumor about it or read about it somewhere. These are facts I have written about and have made videos about. I say these things because I know firsthand how little the entrenched members of Congress care about the concerns of the public when it is not time to be re-elected. But we can change this scenario. We can end this cycle of broken campaign promises and political party agendas. All we need to do is what we are doing. We are standing up and using our rights. They are the most powerful tool we have along with our votes. Our rights and votes combined ensure that the most entrenched, the most deaf to our concerns, the most special interest supported elected officials cannot maintain their granted power. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. We, the people, not the special interests, not the Democrats, a political party, or a political agenda. Not the government, the people. I want to close with that thought. The people. You and I, our friends and families, we are the power of America. Never let a commercial, a media station, a political ad, or a campaign promise make you forget that. Because in roughly two months, you will have the chance to use your power and make a change. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but I am reminding you. And everyone that will read this speech or hear this speech will see this on video. That rain or shine, whatever the political ads or media mockery, your vote will guide this nation to the future. We, the people of America and Congress, we, we are the people of America. And Congress needs to wake up call to remember that fact. I want to thank you, and God bless you.